Greetings and welcome to Yarnspirations.com. I'm Mary Beth Temple for Hooked for Life, and in this video, we're going to take a look at the Small Fry Crochet Sleep Sack. This is an adorable little sleep sack for your tiniest friends. Um, we're going to make a front and a back in the Bernat Blanket Bright in the race car red color. And then we're going to make the French fries in School Bus Yellow individually and sew them on the sleep sack, which gives us two things. It gives us a little pillow in the back for baby's head. And of course it is adorable. Now this is incredibly simple to stitch. All we're going to look at in the video is some tips on making crocheted short rows. And we're going to do a refresher on the reverse single crochet, also known as the crab stitch. Before we get started, take a moment to like this video and subscribe to the Yarn Inspirations channel here on YouTube. We put fresh content up in knitting, crocheting, and other yarny crafts every week. To make this blanket, you're going to need the Bernat Blanket Brights in Race Car Red and School Bus Yellow. You'll need two of the red, one of the yellow. You're going to need two sizes of crochet hooks. You're going to need the K 10 and a half and the 11 L11, which is the eight millimeter or size needed to obtain gauge. Now, gauge is not critical on this. You want a pleasing fabric. Um, Bernat blanket is very forgiving because it's so thick. Your stitches look amazing no matter what you do. But let's take a look at just a couple of small tips you will need to make this incredibly simple to stitch, adorable little sleep sack. So let's take a look at the pattern at the beginning. As promised, this is very simple to stitch. So with your larger hook, you've done your chain, you've done some single crochet rows, and then there are some increased rows in which you, uh, after the chain one turn, single crochet in the first single crochet, two in the next, and go to the end two, until there's two remaining, two in the next to last one and one in the last one. And what that does is that brings your increases one stitch in from the end, edge and gives you a much neater edge. So um, that's how that goes. And now we're going to shape the top. So we're going to chain one single crochet in the first 14 single crochet turn, leaving remaining stitches unworked. Um, a lot of people try and make this harder than it needs to be, which is why I'm gonna show you on camera. So we're stitching along I know I have three left. My swatch is a little smaller than yours will be. So it's not quite 14, but I'm stitching along. And it says, leave remaining stitches unworked. Turn, chain one. So literally leaving remaining stitches unworked, there's nothing else to do, just leave them be. We're gonna go back later and we're gonna talk about that and we're gonna join to the other side and see how that goes. But honestly, if it says leave them unworked, just don't be bothered with them at all. Then we're going to do a single crochet two together, which is insert your hook in the stitch, yarn over, pull it up. Insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over, pull it up, yarn over, pull through three. And then we're going to single crochet to the end. Again, my row's a little shorter than yours will be. and turn and chain one at the beginning of row three, single crochet in each single crochet to last two stitches. They mean these two, not way over here because the row is now this short row and the technique is literally, literally called short rows. So we're going to single crochet to the last two stitches, here they are and single crochet together. So once again, in the stitch, yarn over and pull it up. In the next stitch, yarn over and pull it up. Yarn over and pull through three. So you're going to repeat the second and third rows until seven stitches remain and fasten off. Uh, again, I've already got less than seven because I have a smaller swatch here. But just make sure, particularly on the, uh, on the, uh, even numbers rows, when it says single crochet to the end of the row, it means here, not here. All right, let's take a look at rejoining the yarn after we've got our first side shaped. 
Okay, now I've cut way close in on this because I want you to see what I'm talking about. Uh, but we're at the top of the second page of the pattern, and it says with right side facing, skip next 10 single crochet, join main color with slip stitch to next single crochet. And once again, this is a very simple technique. A lot of people try and make it harder than it is. So I want to skip 10. So I want to give my last stitch a tug to see what stitch it's in. So he's in here. Now I'm going to skip 10, so I'm just going to count the stitches on the top. Count both legs of the stitches, it's easier to see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Slip stitch, so I had a slip knot on my hook already. Uh, slip stitch in the next stitch. So that just gets my yarn joined. Oh, sorry, I had a twist there. That gets my yarn joined. And then reading the first row, it says chain one, single crochet in same space, single crochet in each of next 13, which will get you to the end and then your turn. So now you, you're doing another short row, but on these rows you are working to the end. And then once again, when you turn the work and you're getting ready to come back this way, when it says to go to the end of the row, the end of the row is here, not way over there. And as you can see, what's gonna happen is you're gonna get your two sides of the French fry cup, which is way easier to see in this photograph. You can see them in here. Kinda hard to see in the main picture because that adorable little, adorable little baby's in there. But this is where all that short row shaping occurs. And that is so uh, your little friend has room for his or her face. So once I have crocheted the front of my sack and the back of my sack, I'm going to sew it together around these three sides and leave the top opening open. So that's where the baby goes. And after that, we're going to put a reverse single crochet edging, also known as the crab stitch. And there is a diagram here on the pattern for you to take a look at. Um, but I like to show this when we do these in the videos because it's one of those things, it's very easy once you get started, but can be a little frustrating if you're just learning. So I have done a slip stitch. Now I am right-handed. So even though I'm right-handed and I normally stitch in this direction, I'm going to make single crochets and I'm gonna orient my hook in the direction it normally is but I'm doing each stitch in the one previous. So my hook is going this way, like it always does, but I'm doing this stitch, then this stitch, then this stitch, then this stitch, etc. So I have uh, joined my main color with a slip stitch at the side seam and chained one to get started. And now the instructions say working from left to right instead of from right to left as usual. Now, of course, if you are left-handed, it will be the other way around. So here's my single crochet. But notice my hook is going the way, oop, that was the tail, sorry about that. So here's my first single crochet, let's try this again. There we go. But my hook is oriented in the direction it normally is. If you try and go back the other way, all you did is turn the row and you don't get this cool edging. So now I'm making a stitch in the stitch before the one I just worked in, but it's still a single crochet. So through the stitch, yarn over and pull it up, yarn over, pull through two. I use this all the time. I use it on all kinds of projects because it gives you a very neat corded edge, but it's also really simple to do. It looks way fancier than it is. So let's talk through that one more time. So my hook is oriented the way it normally is when I stitch. I'm simply going in the stitch ahead of the one before the one that I just made. And that's all there is to the reverse single crochet or the crab stitch. And as you can see, you get this nice corded edging. I use it to finish a ton of projects. To make the french fries, all you're going to do, you're gonna use the smaller hook and it's chaining and half double crochet. That's all there is to that. You're gonna make as many as it tells you. And then to finish it all up, you're going to get two fries of the same size held together. 
and single crochet in each stitch around the outer edge of the fry working through both thicknesses so that gives you a big thick it's almost like baby has a pillow in there um, and then you're going to sew the french fries to the back of the sack as illustrated and we told you the way we did it which is small medium large large medium small but you of course can put them in any direction you want you put them in any order that you would like to have them you could angle them if you wanted but having them straight them down like this it does give sort of a pillow effect plus it's adorable so thank you so much for joining us here on yarnspirations.com for the small fry crochet sleep sack i'm mary beth temple for hooked for life we look forward to seeing you again real soon and please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like this video we put up fresh content every week bye bye <laughs>